it. And all of that jazz while I try. And oh, a thrift haul. Hello, I'm Benita, and welcome back to Lab of Drew and Twill YouTube channel, where we're all about vintage fashion and lifestyle. Today, in the video I'm planning to do is a thrift haul. Yes, I am finally dusting off the old YouTube channel because I haven't been around in, mm, I don't know, way too long. And I'm really excited to show you some of the treasures that I found. So, for the last few years of my life, I've been living with my family in Thailand. And they don't have very good vintage over there. I also don't have anything to really speak of for thrifting. So, I really missed going out and seeking for vintage treasures in person and trying to dig through things and seeing what I can find. So, I was really excited when we got back to Canberra, which is the capital where we're located. And I got to go thrifting for the first time in like forever and it was amazing. And actually, really surprising, I managed to find some vintage treasures which is really unusual. I have to say that having been an avid thrifter for quite so many years here in Canberra, the thrifting scene is usually pretty dismal. I don't know whether it's because the vintage pickers come and pick everything out of the thrift shop before it gets on the shelves. I don't know, but usually I really can't find much unless it's maybe some books for my children and myself, which, you know, I'm not complaining at, but it certainly isn't the true vintage treasures that I'm looking for. So I was really glad that this time, not only did I get to go thrifting for the first time in forever, I actually managed to find some true vintage treasures, which I'm really excited to show to you. So let's get into it, shall we? Okay, the first thing I have here is something that's not particularly vintage, but I actually am completely obsessed with it. It is... As you can see, a horse cross stitch cushion. And I think this is amazing because you might not know because it's probably not well advertised, but I'm a horse girl. I have my own horse. I love horses. I've been a horse girl actually longer than I've been a vintage girl. So that's saying something. And this guy is stunning. The cross stitch is done absolutely beautifully. And I do feel this is actually a very vintage style. It's kind of reminiscent of like those old cushions, tapestry cushions that you'd get. So even though this might not be the truest vintage, I still love it. And look, I think this is actually a flower sack inside that's holding the stuffing in. So that's actually pretty cool. This might be older than what I realize, but this was my find. And it was $12 Australian from Minis. So the things that I picked up today are actually a mixed bag. I kind of mixed them up by accident. I have some things from Sally's, which is Salvation Army, for those who don't speak Aussie slang lingo, and from Vinnie's, which is actually the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. But you know, Australians, we like to shorten everything. So it's Sally's and Vinnie's respectively. <laughs> anyway, that is her. I love that. And I'm really glad I found it. I also found these two stocking packets. Is that back to front? Anyway, there we go. So they say that they are non-run stretch, sheer seamless. Why seamless? I love seam stockings. Nylons. Now, I don't actually find stockings, like these really old vintage stockings in thrift shops very often. So even though they're seamless, I still pick them up anyway because I thought they're probably going to last better than most modern stockings do because I don't know what it is about modern stockings but as soon as I put them on, they run and I can't do anything about it. So, I was very happy to snag both of those for a dollar each. That was a bargain if you ask me. Now the next thing I picked up a rather lot of, if I can dig it out of this bag here, is some fabric because when I see fabric I can't really resist picking it up. So I got this lovely pink gingham. There's not much of that, so I might have to use that for like, you know, a waistband or inside a pocket or a collar or something like that and use it as an accent rather than a full fabric piece. But that's okay because it's adorable and I love it. It's got these tiny little checks, but it's the prettiest shade of pink, so I'm really excited about that. I also found this, um, I don't know what to call it. It's kind of like a, it's definitely stretch jersey of some sort, but I don't know exactly what it's made of. It has a very thick polyester feeling, but mm, there we go. That's the length of it. It's this nice gray color. And I don't know what I was thinking when I purchased it. I think I was thinking that maybe I'd be able to piece out some sort of winter top from it. There might not be enough of it for that, but I'll give it my best shot. I think that there's rarely any little bits of fabric that can't be used for something. I also picked up this zipper, which I believe has probably been in something before because it's really crumpled and old, but it's a lovely meta zipper. It's quite short, but it would make a good pants zipper or a skirt zipper or something like that. So 
had to grab that because metal zippers are worth their weight in gold just about. You can't find them and they just last so much longer than any of the modern plastic zippers that I buy at the shops. So that was a must have. Then I also found, I really hate how they put labels on the top of everything. If you're going to price tag it, at least put it in the bottom where nobody can see it. Ugh. Yeah, that's definitely like not nice. Let's pick that off the top. There we go. That's better. That looks much nicer now without that label on it. $2 though. So this was a good deal. And as you'll see, it is a earring case with a lovely mirror. I'm trying to show the mirror to you without showing my camera setup, but there we are. That's the mirror. This in this shape fantastic. And it's this kind of golden, golden rod. That's the color I'd call it. It's a golden rod velvet interior. And I just think this was absolutely gorgeous. And as soon as I saw it for $2, I was like, yes, of course. And this is vintage. I'm not sure what era this is from. I mean, it could be 60s, 70s, 80s. It could be like 50s for all I know, or maybe even 40s. It doesn't really have much of an indication of age, but if I was going to give it my best bet, I'd say somewhere between the 60s and 70s for this piece. That colour actually reminds me a lot of what was popular in the 60s and 70s, so that would be my best guess for that one. Then I also picked up a few jewellery pieces. I found this little mother of pearl, let me make the camera focus for you, Albrecht. Isn't it just the sweetest? It's so cute. I love pearl and mother of pearl pieces, so I saw that. It had to come home with me. It was $4, so probably a little bit expensive for the size, although for the age, probably not. <laughs> and then I found this lovely strand, double strand of pearls. Now these are faux because one of them has completely lost, let's see if you can see that. One of them has completely lost all of its pearl pearlescent casing but look at the clasp let me show you let me see if I can show you properly oh it doesn't want to focus there you go isn't that just the sweetest and that's a marquee setting and it has the old-fashioned oh let me see if I can the squeeze clip thing but it can be a little bit stiff but yeah there we go that sort of old-fashioned clip and it actually has the loveliest feeling to it as well. Like the pearls and the string and everything has this really silky, delicate feel. So even though they're fake, obviously, and even though one of them has been completely scratched off, I still think that this was a gorgeous find and I'm super happy with that. This one was $7, which again, I don't know how I feel about that. One of them so obviously damaged and it's quite close to the front of the neck, but I still thought it was pretty sweet. So I picked it up anyway. The next thing I purchased were these two rose plates with this pretty pattern. Again, the label's right in the middle. There we are. Now I actually bought these because they don't have cups to go with them, they're just saucers. I bought these to water paint with because um, I do a lot of art and I love having a nice ceramic saucer to mix my water paints on. And I thought that these could work really well and also be something to pretty something that was super pretty to look at and inspire me while I'm doing my art because I do do a lot of florals and vintage inspired art. So these are perfect and I'm excited to try them out with my watercolors and see how they go. Now, oh, let's see what's next. Ah, more fabric, I forgot about that. Some interfacing, which is always handy. So I picked that up and this is some seersucker, white seersucker. Oh my gosh, I love this stuff. You just can't find it anymore, but this stuff I definitely, definitely has enough for a blouse. So I'm really, really happy about that because I absolutely adore Seasucker for summer anything. It doesn't crumple when you wear it. It always looks fresh. It's really lightweight. It breathes really well. And so this is going to be a summer blouse for certain. And I'm really excited to use that. Next in my bag, I have a giant tablecloth. So. Ooh, I don't even know if I can show you all of this, but it's a crocheted tablecloth, which is about, oh, let me step back. Can you see? Oh, look how long it is. It's a little longer than my arm span. Just a little. <laughs> there we go. Look, I can wear it as a shawl. Ta-da! <laughs> anyway, this is a beautiful crocheted piece. It's quite fresh and nice, actually. A lot of the times you'll find these, they've been yellowed from age. So I'm not sure when this made, or maybe it was just stuck in a cupboard somewhere and never used. But 
It's beautifully fresh. It doesn't appear to have any holes in it. And so I was really happy with this one because it was $4.50. A bargain. $4.50 Australian for this tablecloth. Absolute bargain. I was very happy about that. So of course I snatched it up in a heartbeat. There we go. And next we have a fistful of doilies. Now these were expensive. I couldn't understand why this giant tablecloth was $4.50 and then some of the doilies were like $4 each. And I'm like, huh? Come again? What? So I picked out a few, but I was kind of a bit picky about which ones I got. So this one was, yeah, $3. $3 for this, the other one was a whole dollar fifty more, and this was $3. I don't understand, but let's face it, it is really pretty. So I like that, and I got this one, which was also $3, but this one has some really sweet cutout work in the middle, so that's nice. I also love the kind of coffee colour of this one. This one was $2.50, which is much more reasonable for a dollar if you ask me. Also $2.50. And then we had this one. Oh, I love this one. This one is so delicate. The pattern is so pretty. And that one was $2.50, which again, much more reasonable. Then we had, oh, this one with the two-tone. This is fun. I like this. I like this a lot with the coffee and the kind of cream color. That's really fun. $3. I was happy to pay $3 for this because like two-tone work is actually harder to do as well. And also it's a larger size. so. I was happy with the price of that one. And then lastly, for the doilies, I think we have this one here, which is like more of a runner. And this one didn't have a label, so I'm not sure if I got charged for that. So maybe that made the price prices a little better. Because that's quite a lot to spend on doilies if you think about it and add it all up. But, of course, I didn't stop and think about it and add it all up because I'm busy thrifting and I don't have time to whip out a calculator. So I probably should do that at some point. And then I just picked up some books for my children. One of the ones that I really love that I should show you is Magic in My Pocket, which is an old vintage book. You can tell from like the pages. Uh, it probably actually tells you when it was produced. It should tell you when it was printed. It says, okay, well, I'm not sure when this particular issue was printed. I think it's saying 1957. Yeah, so this is from the 50s. Wow. I love old books. And that's a lot of fun. Here we go. And then I think lastly in my bag is ta -da, knitting needles. <laughs> I actually really, really enjoy metal knitting needles. I know some people don't. They like bamboo or wooden um, plastic even, but these are the deal for me. A good, honest to goodness, ugh. an honest to goodness, Metal knitting needle is where it's at, if you ask me. I like the way the wool feels on the needle. I like the way it feels in my hand. Having a little bit of weight, but not too much, is really, really good. So I just picked up an assortment of sizes because I do already have a bunch of knitting needles, but they're currently all packed away in storage because we haven't got our stuff out of storage yet. So these will be handy for when I do my knitting because if you ask me, knitting is a winter sport and it is currently winter down under in Australia. So I'm full steam ahead, raring to go and pick up as many knitting patterns and knitting projects as I can. And that's why I got these. Next, let's see what else we have in our bag of goodies. Oh, we got another zip. Oopsie daisies. So this one's another metal one. It's longer than the other blue one that I showed you. And I'd probably put this one in a dress because that's a good size for that. So that's good. And then another great find which I was really happy with, is this purse. Now, I'm pretty sure this is actually 80s does 50s rather than true 50s vintage, which is fine with me. I think it still looks cute. It's got a decent inside. It's not smelly or anything like that. So this is what's inside. Yeah, so you can see from the like kind of plasticky lining, it's not any older than the 80s. I can also tell because of the fact that it had it has these little hooks here for a longer chain and they didn't really do that in the 50s they only had like the short handles they never had like the long chain to go across your body as well so it's just a short handle here and honestly I'll just wear it this way so even though it has the hooks I probably won't use that for anything I'll just leave it like this and I don't actually have a big large white purse like this so I was really happy to find it because I think it will do beautifully with some of my outfits 
So that's the first bag of things that I found when I was thrifting in Canberra. I will actually do a separate video for the second half of the thrift haul because, as I said before, there's actually quite a lot of stuff and I would really like to show you that as well. But if I show that to you now, this video will go forever. So let's end it here. Hopefully you've enjoyed the first part and you'll be happy to come back for part two. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell if you'd like to know when that second part comes around and leave me a comment down below of which find you thought was the best priced or the worst priced or which one you just liked best and I'd love to chat to you in the comments. So that's all for now, I'll see you all later. Bye! I think I might need to turn the light on in here. That's getting dark.